Harry Potter, Dimensional Wizard, Author Lazy Sage Dow, Please Give Your Love and Support. Chapter 471 Cause and Effect Spell Now that he had a plan and everything was set up, Edward prepared to act and get things done as soon as possible. After all, the situation of the war was changing every minute, and the slightest delay could be catastrophic. So, he mobilized the energy from the main ether core, gathering power on par with Tier 10. Then, under Edward's control, seven magic circles appeared above this plane in different locations. As soon as these seven circles appeared in the sky, seven mighty auras manifested and flew to the sky, gazing at these circles. The seven beast emperors, muttered Edward. This plane had seven tier nine beast masters, and they were known as the beast emperors. The emperors were associated with five empires, with the Cortez and Nehru empires each having two emperors. Inside the city, Edward watched as these emperors morphed into half-beast and half-human shapes. And based on his data, he recognized some of these creatures, including Titan Ape, Blue Dragon, and Feathered Serpent. However, he also did not recognize the rest, an indication they originated from this plane, or somewhere else the wizard planes once controlled. After the emperors showed up, they released their most powerful bloodline spell, trying to destroy Edward's magic circles. However, he did not care about their pointless struggles. Instead, he focused on another discovery he had made. This world drastically restricted the destructive capabilities of these beast emperors. As Tier 9 powerhouses, they should have the ability to destroy galaxies with a single attack. However, their destructive capabilities did not reach such a scale in this plane. There was a plane that severely suppressed the potency of their attack. The size of this plane is equal to 15 galaxies from home. If the universe will did not suppress the power of these beast emperors, they would easily destroy the world with the slightest confrontation. Edward understood this method was the way lower or weaker planes function to ensure their survival. He could foresee that some universe will will even prevent people from reaching the limit of the plane. In other words, a plane with a tier 8 limit would never allow anyone to reach such a level. The best they can accomplish is Tier 7. This method would prevent anyone from having the power to destroy the plane. The instinct of all life is to survive. And it's the same for universe wills, concluded Edward before continuing his actions. With the overwhelming energy of the floating city, he swiftly sealed the beast emperors without giving them any chance of resisting. Then, he cast a second spell. Hundreds of magic circles appeared in the sky above this plane. Boss. We don't have room for everything, reminded Morgana. Huh? You're right. All right, I'll shrink them. Under his control, some of the magic runes changed. The first step, seal the universe will. Based on Edward's study of the universe will of four different universes, he concluded it is another form of consciousness or will. And this consciousness even has certain properties of the soul. As such, it became possible to design seals or other methods to influence it. And with the vast difference in tier, the process was almost perfect. After being sealed, all the creatures of this plane heard a sad and unwilling voice. And immediately, an intense emotion awakened from deep in their souls. Then, they knew their world was invaded and about to be destroyed. Subsequently, an intense hatred aroused from deep in their bloodline against the invader. This might be troublesome, commented Morgana after detecting the situation. What are we going to do? asked Tsunade, who feared the change in the situation would result in catastrophe for the people on this plane. We will have to take longer to integrate these people into the Empire. We will delete and change their memories if needed. Do you want me to keep a watch on them after their integration? Yes, nodded Edward. We don't know whether this effect will last longer and stay hidden deep in their subconscious for many years. Morgana took notes of this incident, while Edward continued. His spells activated, and a few things occurred. First, all the trillions of people in this plane passed out before shrinking into humans the height of a tennis ball. Then, he teleported all of them to a pocket dimension inside the floating city, placing them into cryostasis mode. Next, the knowledge tree. Edward took this opportunity to test out his main objective for traveling to the Naruto universe. Then, a towering tree appeared at the very center of the plane. Then, after an hour, 
the tree gave birth to a single blue fruit. Edward held the fruit in his hand with fascination. He knew this fruit contained thousands of years of knowledge from this plane. Here you go, he uttered before handing it to Morgana. If he eats this fruit, he will have to spend the next three months in deep meditation to absorb all the information it contains. As such, the best method of use is to allow Morgana to have it. With her processing power, she can absorb everything in a matter of minutes. How is it? asked Edward. However, the little elf did not immediately answer. She even had a frown on her face. I think I found a flaw in the fruit. Oh, what is it? It can only gather knowledge up to one million years in the past. Is that so? Well, we can try to modify it later and improve the time span, nodded Edward. Did you learn anything useful? I've learned about their history, replied Morgana. About a million years ago, the wizard plane had already left, and the world was ruled by the beasts. It was their era. During that period, the main power system was wizards and bloodline knights. However, the beasts almost wiped out the heritage of this system. Then, everything changed after the first beast master appeared. The profession originated from the laboratory of a few wizards from ancient times. They slowly rose before becoming the aspect predators of this world. Edward nodded. Anything else? Yes. Although the beast master civilization has reached its end, there is some benefit. There are currently no tier 9 beasts in this plane, so the path to higher levels is cut off for most individuals in this world. That's why she said their civilization had reached the end. The humans have almost driven the magical beasts to extinction. And without the bloodline knowledge and technology of the wizard world, this plane cannot cultivate higher tier beasts. The fruit contained data on every single beast master's fusion since a million years ago. All this data will allow us to further our understanding of the life code, the changes to the soul, and even the soul flame. We can also gather data on willpower since it's one of the requirements for a successful fusion. Do we have any information on the wizard's power system? Unfortunately, no. Oh? Logically speaking, we should at least have some basic data. True. But some power of cause and effect seems to prevent me from accessing the information. Cause and effect? Could these wizards place some powerful spell on their power systems to prevent others from getting it? If that were the case, the people of this plane would never get their hands on it as well, added Tsunade. Unless this spell is targeting us specifically. The Empire? We don't have any connection with the wizard plane. No, their target should be people from the cosmic plane world, replied Edward. It could also be people with bloodline from the Magus race, added Morgana. Earthlings have a small trace of Magus bloodline, so her conjecture could be correct. All right, we need to leave in case some mighty being from the wizard plane detects something, said Edward, who no longer hesitated. He previously wanted to fix the city in this plane, but now, he decided to be cautious. So, he placed the entire plane inside the floating city and removed all traces of his existence from this place before returning home. Chapter 472, Truth Council a few minutes after Edward left, three people dressed in all-black magic robes appeared. The aura of these people was deep, and they were all tier 10. Is this the correct coordinate? Asked Arza, the only woman of the three. She had flaming red hair and a voluptuous body, but no one dared look at her. Her eyes were cold, and she emanated a fiery aura that could incinerate anything in its path. Yes, replied Eli a man with snake pupils and green hair. But there is nothing here. That's obvious. Arza glared at him, and her agitated emotion made the surrounding emptiness fluctuate. However, Eli ignored her. I sense the remains of spatial energy, said Miria, an elf with blood eyes. Someone must have taken away this plane. The god of space, asked Eli. No, not him. If it's not him, who could it be? The Guardians would not leave the Cosmic Faith Plane, added Arza. Their wizard plane cannot easily enter the Cosmic Faith Plane for three reasons. First, there are still some methods left from the Magus race to protect the entire plane. Second is their fear of the Magus race and whether they are still alive or hiding in the shadows. Lastly, the Cosmic Faith Plane is not a weak plane, as there are multiple Tier 10 gods. Of course, with the power of the wizard plane and even the top planes, 
they don't care about the power of that plane. However, they don't want to lose too much strength in the process of their conquering. The gods from Cosmic God Faith have many advantages and use them to their advantage. The entire astral realm is now their enemy, but the gods can still prosper because of these advantages. The wizard plane had a special squad designated to hunt down these gods and learn more secrets from them. However, these gods are cunning and not easy to catch. So, they left many planes as bait for the gods. As long as they enter and meet the criteria, they will activate the cause and effect spell of the wizard plane and reveal their location. I've dealt with the god of space before. His control of space authority is not as refined as whoever took this plane. If Miria were not extremely sensitive to energy, he would not have detected the subtle energy left in this place. Such manipulation of space authority is not something the god of space could do, unless he drastically increased since he last met him. Are you saying there is someone in the cosmic faith plane with even better control of space authority than the god of space? Asked Eli. Yes. Are you sure the god of space did not improve? Asked Arza. This is possible, replied Miria. However, to have such great improvement, he would have to conquer another tier 10 universe or have some other encounter I am not aware of. Could it be that another power has risen? Or is someone trying to take away the space authority? uttered Eli. Both possible. Either way, it's a new variable. So, let's report to the elders of the Truth Council, said Arza, her eyes containing reverence, fear, and desires when mentioning these elders. Can you detect any information? Miria shook his head. The person was clean and efficient in cleaning up their trace. If they were not in a hurry, I guess I probably won't even detect the spatial energy. Having such a competent tier 10 god is not a good thing for us, commented Eli. No matter how competent that person is, it does not change the fact they will forever be ants before the elders, rebutted Arza. But what if they reach the level of truth? asked Eli. Tier 11 wizard is referred to as truth wizard, and they are the only ones capable of seating in the position of elders in the council. It has been so long, and only the guardians came close to that level but still failed said Arza with a sneer. Those gods are nothing but waste. Arza felt resentment after mentioning these gods. Before the rise of the Magus race, Tier 10 was the limit of all power systems and planes. However, during their rise, while fighting the invasions of the Magus race, these powerful races learned and created methods to reach Tier 11. Unfortunately, their methods were flawed, resulting in a limited number of Tier 11 entities in each of these top planes. Even the Abyss Plane, the largest plane in the Astral Realm, has a limited number of places to reach Tier 11. And the only exception to this rule is the Cosmic Faith Plane. This fact is the source of Arza's resentment. With her talent and ability, as long as she has the opportunity, she can become a Truth Wizard. There is no need to be resentful, said Eli calmly. Sooner or later, we will conquer their plane, destroy all these gods, and reach the level of Truth. For the first time in a long time, Arza felt this guy Eli was pleasing to the eye. So, she gave him an approving nod and did not care for the latter's cold response. Meanwhile, Miria was the calmness of the three. Are things that simple? The existence of the Magus has brought fear to the elders, preventing their advancements for billions of years. They have removed their fear, but will things proceed smoothly? The disappearance of the Magus race is one of the greatest mysteries of the astral realm. However, after a bit of logical reasoning and some information, it's not hard to deduce why they disappeared. Tier 12 The Magus race conquered the astral realm for one purpose, to gather the knowledge and resources of all planes to transcend the astral realm and reach higher tiers. Their disappearance showed one thing. They succeeded and their entire civilization transcended the astral realm and left this universe. The Magus race valued the collective since they knew it was the best way to develop knowledge, technology, and culture. So, it would not be hard to take everybody and leave. Many people concluded this outcome. Of course, there are a few people who believe something else. They believe the Magus race did some forbidden experiment and encountered a tier 12 entity that wiped out their entire civilization. Unfortunately, a few relics discovered so far showed the Magus race was preparing for a widespread migration. The migration came suddenly and was swift and decisive. 
Furthermore, the higher-ups of the Magus race did not allow anyone to stay. Do you think we should notify the other planes of this news? Asked Eli. We might need them in our conquest, so revealing such information might not be a big deal, replied Arza. The wizard plane wanted the cosmic faith plane for themselves, and it was the same for the other top six planes. Unfortunately, none of them dared to deal with it alone. And it's not only because of the fear of the Magus race, but also because they don't want to lose too much in the process and give the other planes the opportunity to further weaken them. There is no point in debating this question since the council will decide such a thing, said Miria. True. Anyway, let's leave and report the situation. We don't want any variable to appear. The group disappeared and returned to the wizard plane. Cosmic Faith Plane. Edward's floating city returned to the Empire, and he exhaled in relief. Are you all right? You seem scared? asked Swanda. My cosmic awareness activated, and I sense a great danger, replied Edward. If I guess correctly, some powerful people from the wizard plane should have arrived after we left. Master, did you see something? Morgana asked since she knew her boss cosmic awareness could show him certain visions from the source of the danger. I only saw three vague figures. However, they were not the sources of the danger. It seems that something, or someone else would show up after them. With the city, we don't have to worry about tier 10 since we can run away if we cannot win. So, if there is danger, that can only mean one thing, said Morgana. Tier 11. Chapter 873. Fix. So far, we have not concluded whether this plane has a tier 11 god. But now, we know there are other planes, said Edward with a frown. He suddenly felt uncomfortable. He had a leisurely life since he knew he could survive in this world with his floating city. But now, he suddenly learned there are many people more powerful than him. And the thought they could appear out of nowhere and destroy everything he worked for frustrated him. Morgana, what are our chances of pushing the floating city to tier 11? Almost zero, replied the elf without any hesitation. According to our simulations, tier 11 should be able to use the power of their variants across the multiverse. So, they are essentially millions of tier 10 combined into one, Edward grunted, but the little elf was not finished. Our knowledge and technology have not even reached the peak of tier 10, and if you take into consideration resources, we are not close to tier 11 technology. Edward's frown deepened. We need to accelerate our study of the multiverse. Increase the spending on this department. Yes, but we are temporarily unable to do so. Edward then remembered they offended some type of force after plundering the multiverse without any restraint when creating the Tier 10 floating city. As such, they are currently stuck in this timeline. I guess we have to take things slowly, muttered Edward, shaking his head in disappointment. He knew it was pointless to hurry. Regardless, the worst case scenario after meeting a Tier 11 entity is to enter the void and abandon everything he previously created. Order all royal family members and people from the Illuminati and their families to leave a part of their soul flame in the floating city. In case something happens, the city can escape on its own and use the flame to revive us. What if they don't want to? After all, soul flame is very important. Morgana was not worried about the royal family, but certain members of the Illuminati might not wish to. Explain the reason. But ultimately, it is their choice. As you wish. Edward stood up, preparing to deal with the plane and fix the city. He saw Swanda giving him a weird look, so he asked, What is it? I knew you were careful, but I didn't think it was to this extent. In this cruel world, I have to be careful. You saw what I did to that plane. Such a thing might happen to the Empire at any time, so I have to prepare for the worst-case scenario. I see. It must be tiring. Everything has a price. I wanted power and knowledge, so I must bear the weight of my ambitions, replied Edward. Anyway, you will be in charge of the ninja's integration into the Empire. Remember, the information revealed to the public is these people are from a special dimension recently discovered. I understand. You don't have to worry. Someone will teach you things like etiquette, political and military strategy, and magical studies. You won't have to do anything until you're prepared. I've already reserved a time acceleration room for you, along with potions to deal with the Karos poison. You can choose whether to continue the path of chakra or mana, or you can try both. 
I understand. Thank you. Edward kissed her on the forehead before heading to another room. Little elf, I've been meaning to name my city. Any suggestions? He asked. You must have a name. Why don't you tell me, and I will comment. What about Netheril? The Forgotten Realms Universe, muttered Morgana. According to your theory, the path of Arcane might have originated from this place, and the Netheril Empire was probably the first to create a floating city throughout the entire void. So, such a name fits. I think so too, nodded Edward. His floating city was the first in the Empire, so he thought it was fitting to call it Netheril. Send an email to the related people about this name change. Is this really necessary? Yes. Only this way will it feel like it was official. The purple-haired elf shook her head before executing the command. Meanwhile, Edward proceeded with his plan to fix the damaged floating city. He stripped the beast master plane of their world source and used it as a powerful energy source to activate the self-healing enchantments he placed on the city. And after two days, the city was returned to its peak state. World source is a magical type of power, Edward commented after seeing the final result. Its multipurpose capabilities are even greater than divine energy, added Morgana. How much is left? We only use a quarter. What do you want to use with the rest? Take a small part for people to break their soul limit and leave the rest for study, replied Edward. What about this plane? What do you want to do with it? We can do so many things. First, after mining all the resources of this plane, we should be able to create three tier nine floating city. Secondly, create a team to study the authority of the entire plane. We also need to study the universe will. I will deploy the golem to build the cities. However, you have to add some of the finishing touches. Who was the one who finished the other three cities? He only created one and was not present for the other two. Nicholas Flaming and His Majesty Rowena. Call them once it's time. And if she asks why I was not called, lie for me. Morgana gave him a fierce stare before changing the topic. Back to the topic, studying authority is not simple. There are few arcanists who reach the standard. However, there is still the issue of trusting them. Find the right target and tell them in advance they will have to sign the most stringent contracts for this project. We will only select the ones who accept. That's fine. What about the study of the universe, Will? After the previous voyage, I already assembled a team for this project. Edward remembered he tasked her with this project after coming back from Black Clover. The universe will is the key for him to become a perfect tier 11 arcanist, so he placed great emphasis on this project. That's good. Anything else? I would like to remind you that the Empire's economy is still affected by Netheril's creation. Although we can recuperate with the resources brought from this voyage, we won't return to our peak state for a while. I see. Luckily, things should drastically improve after we conquer this galaxy, Edward commented. In the meantime, I will send my clones to study the mana grid. As long as he can control the mana grid, the issue of resources should be dealt with. What is my next itinerary? You have lunch with your family before meeting with Commander Olivier to deal with the war. Edward nodded before meeting with his mother and father. Then, he went to see Susan and his aunt, Amelia. Finally, he met with Olivier. No, not now. We are in the war room, said Olivier, stopping his advance for a kiss. But there is no one here. It doesn't matter. But I miss you. Immensely. Tonight, we can have a wild night. But now, you have to control yourself. Fine, said Edward, sitting on his seat. What is the situation? Hermione succeeded in controlling a layer of the abyss. We now have control of a few demonic legions. A few? Apparently, she needs to refine a special brand before becoming an abyss lord. And the process is not yet complete, limiting the number of troops she can control. Edward knew that certain magical artifacts needed to be refined. A process where the holder branded their soul imprint into the item, making them its sole owner and controller. However, this process usually takes time. The overall situation has returned to its stable state as we slowly confront and wear out Guznad forces while secretly weakening other forces, continued Oliver. The integration of the undead is also proceeding smoothly with Wiz's help. So, I don't need to do anything. Not quite right. We need your help dealing with the remaining top factions of this galaxy. Oh, 
Is there a new development? Yes, with both the elves and the intelligence. However, our current focus is on the latter. Chapter 474 Intelligence Edward took a moment to remember the information he had about the intelligence. They were a human civilization with terrible galactic relationships with almost every faction in the Milky Way. And the reason is that their civilization was similar to the ideal Aryan race of Hitler. Their population is composed of only humans of Caucasian descent, with the only difference is many of their populations have red, blue, and purple hair. The intelligents are extremely racist and xenophobic, and the source of these ideologies in their culture is their hatred for magic or anything supernatural. They reject all these things and only pursue the development of technology. Edward was inspired to create his conjecture about the pure materialism world after studying the intelligence culture. Because of these ideas, no race or factions wanted to facilitate any diplomatic relationship with them, and the intelligence were perfectly fine with this. As a result, when Guznat attacked all the top forces in the galaxy during the fall of darkness, they suffered the greatest damage, and their civilization was almost wiped out. So, what happened to them? asked Edward. After the fall of darkness, their civilization scattered throughout the galaxy, barely surviving the onslaught of the Undead Legion, explained Olivier. However, we recently discovered a faction that is regrouping the scattered members. Oliver showed him the information with a hologram floating before her on the table. This information is not enough to pay attention to them. But everything changed when one of our scout ships had an encounter with them. They discovered their technology had drastically improved in such a short period. Edward frowned, but he did not interrupt. This news was suspicious, but not enough for me to send you. After all, it's a period of war, so it's normal for technology to develop rapidly. Furthermore, there is a chance they discovered a vestige of an old civilization, leading to their rapid improvement after deciphering it. The time of war is also a time of prosperity. All factions and races are in a hurry to mine new planets, conquer more lands, and move around. As a result, numerous ancient civilizations are being discovered, leading to the recuperation of new magical and technological knowledge. Edward's two archaeologist apprentices have been busy, traveling from one tomb to another. So, after taking this fact into consideration, Olivier did not completely pay attention to the intelligence. I was still suspicious, so I sent some spies to gather information, just in case. And they found something? asked Edward. Yes, they discovered the intelligence were studying the application of cosmic energy as a way to evolve. They want powers using cosmic energy? Cosmic energy is a unique form of energy that originated from planets, stars, galaxies, nebulas, and the entire universe. It's a very potent form of energy, capable of accomplishing many wonderful things like mana or other types of energy. Unfortunately, the Empire's current research in this field can only be described as okay. Many things have been accomplished, even using it through technology. However, if Edward had to put a level to it, the current level was barely tier 5. Olivier nodded her head. As you know, they hate the supernatural with a passion. So, I found it odd. For a civilization like the Intelligence, it would be very difficult to change their culture in such a short time, commented Edward. Do you think there is an outside force interfering? This is one of the possibilities I thought of, replied Olivier. So, what do you need me to do? The spies we sent did not completely fulfill their mission, explained Olivier. They were detected and had to escape. Luckily, they gathered a valuable piece of information. She controlled the hologram to show a planet. According to the information, this planet is one of their experiment sites. I want you to secretly observe and see how far their experiment has developed. Olivier changed the hologram again. Then, you need to go to their home planet and find the reason for their sudden change. Very well, agreed Edward. Take the clone city. It can still last two days, added Olivier. The intelligence are not a threat to the current Edward. However, she wanted to be careful in case there was someone in the shadow. All right. Edward and Olivier did not waste time and mobilized. She gave the appropriate order, the time clone city returned, and Edward took control. He plugged his designated coordinate and headed to Planet Greensour on the Sweden star system, located more than 30,000 light-years from Earth. Hum, 
muttered Morgana after they arrived. Is there a problem? The detecting system placed around this planet reached Tier 9, she explained. Their technology truly has developed too fast. Before the fall of darkness, the intelligence only had Tier 8 technology. And until probably a few months ago, the fact did not change. No, their technology was weaker after the destruction of their home planet. Can they detect us? asked Edward. They will if we directly barge in, replied the little elf. However, give me one hour and fifteen minutes, and I can create a countermeasure. No need. Leave the city on standby and prepare to react at any moment. We will enter ourselves. As you wish. The city was too big and required too many complicated things to bypass this planet system. Meanwhile, Edward used transfiguration magic to turn himself into cosmic dust and enter the planet. As such, the intelligence technology will not notice or care about one of the trillions of cosmic dust and rays that entered the planet's atmosphere. After his successful filtration, Edward placed an invisible spell around him as he looked at the surroundings. He looked around and frowned. Everything seemed quiet, and as far as his eyes could see, he only saw ruins. The architecture resembled Earth during the 21st century. He looked at a destroyed thing not far from him. He waved his hand, and the thing flew to his hand. A smartphone? This planet might have been a human civilization similar to Earth's 21st century. Morgana. I'm on it. In a few seconds, she accessed all the data from the phone and displayed them to Edward. The owner was a human woman of Middle Eastern descent. She loved to travel as she had many photos in different locations. This place was indeed similar to Earth. Same ethnicities and races, the same level of technology, and similar culture. The main differences are history and geography. Planet Green Sour had a massive landmass, similar to Pangaea. This continent took 80% of the planet while the rest was water. Because all the lands are interconnected, the humans on this planet travel more often. Conflict is less than on Earth because of the lack of the ocean as a military barrier. Of course, marine technology is also less developed as a result. It's normal, said Morgana. The intelligence would want a place like this for their experiment. True, nodded Edward. Do you know what happened? I can't find much information from this phone. I extracted a news video from this phone that indicates a worldwide emergency. However, the owner and I could not recover all the data since the phone was broken. Well, let's go over there. We might find our answer. Edward sensed a weird creature. And he said it was weird because the life energy released by it was abnormal. So, he teleported to the location he sensed and saw a pretty gruesome thing. A human was eating another while making grunting sounds. An undead? asked Morgana. But I don't sense any death energy from it. That's because it was not created using magic, Edward said as he looked at that creature feasting on its flesh. You mean the intelligence experiment? How could it turn like this? Please like shares and subscribe. Chapter 475 Zombie Anomaly Morgana quickly scanned the zombie to analyze why it turned into an undead without death magic. Cosmic energy, she muttered. A large amount of cosmic energy was introduced into its body, forcibly altering its DNA. Is this the experiment of the intelligence? It would take time to slowly study and understand cosmic energy, replied Edward as he looked at the zombie. So, they found a planet with humans of similar genetic base and bombarded the entire planet with massive amounts of cosmic energy. The people with talent will survive the process and have their DNA forcibly altered, gaining powers and the ability to control cosmic energy. Meanwhile, the one who fails will turn into this shape. A very rude but effective method, commented Morgana. But something is wrong. The people who fail to adapt to the cosmic energy should not end in this situation. You're right. Based on our understanding of comics energy, their genes should have collapsed, resulting in death. They should not turn into zombies. Do you think it was the result of the concentration? After all, we have never experimented with placing ordinary people under such tremendous energy. That's a possibility, replied Edward as he reviewed the data from the scan. However, he did not find anything, including a virus like the T-virus. Let's continue to observe, said Edward, and the two teleported to a location where he sensed a clash of energy. He saw two people fighting. 
To be precise, a human and a massive bear. The human had the ability to metalize his body, turning into a silver man. Meanwhile, the bear could create an energy construct in the shape of bear claws. Both were tier two and fought non-stop, trying to kill each other. Both had their genes forcibly altered by cosmic energy, analyzed Morgana. And it seems through repeated use of their abilities, they can passively absorb the energy in the surroundings to strengthen their genes. Very primitive power system, but the fact they already created a tier two entity in a few months, that's a feat, commented Edward. And they might not be the most powerful creatures on this planet. Edward read the mind of these two and learned a few things about the people of this world. Five disaster class ability users and seven demon kings. How interesting. There are five people on this planet whose strength reached tier four, capable of destroying a country on their own. Then, there are seven animals who also reached this level. Master, did you find something interesting? Yes, let's check it out. He teleported to a place with human habitat. It was a military city with countless humans living in a city surrounded by massive steel walls. While invisible, Edward appeared in a room where a man of South Asian descent sat cross-legged deep in meditation. A few minutes later, the man opened his eyes and sighed. I need to reach disaster class as soon as possible. My method is the future of humanity. The man stood up from his position and walked to the window, looking into the horizon. That man, could it be? asked Morgana. That's right. He's a path seeker like me, replied Edward. Most of the humans on this planet rely on the mutation of their genes to acquire their powers. However, he created a method to sense, absorb, and control cosmic energy. Although this method is rough and rudimentary, it's still a great accomplishment for such a short period. Morgana swiftly scanned his body and discovered a crystal in his brain. He condenses a crystal of cosmic energy in his brain, acting as an energy core. However, he recently reached the limit of Tier 3 and is searching for a way to reach Tier 4. In his current state, if he wants to reach a higher tier, he has two options. The first is to walk sorcery's path and find ways to control the cosmic energy in the environment. And the second is to condense more core. However, the brain is a very complicated machine. He was lucky to choose the right place for the first one, but he might not be lucky a second time. Edward was not speaking nonsense as he used time magic to look at the past and saw this person condense the first cosmic energy core, and it was purely out of luck he succeeded. His method was perfect, but he chose the brain for the core, which has its advantage. However, although this person can be considered a genius in energy manipulation, especially cosmic energy, he knew very little about anatomy or the human brain. So, the location he chose succeeded only out of luck. Boss, what should we do? Do you want to bring him back to the Empire? He's very talented and could make a great arcanist, asked the purple-haired elf. No, at least not now. Let this planet develop on its own to see what kind of civilization it can create. Then, we can show up and take the fruit. After a few years, the Empire might increase its understanding of cosmic energy based on this planet's development. Furthermore, this planet also walked the path of gene modification but using cosmic energy. The Empire can also benefit from this aspect of its technology tree. In that case, we must take control of this planet from the intelligence. Correct, but wait until we discover what's going on with them. Okay, do you want to go now? Not yet. I want to know how these zombies appeared replied Edward. Before we leave, let's give him a luck potion to help him achieve Tier 4. Edward secretly gave the man the potion before disappearing. He began to capture, observe, and experiment on the zombies. There is a weird energy affecting their bodies, noted Morgana. Not every human with low energy affinity turned into a zombie. Many died due to gene collapse, but the rest only became sick for a while before surviving, with no power. The previous man, Raj, was one of these people, but he used his knowledge of meditation to sense cosmic energy and created a method to condense the core. So, the zombies were an anomaly. This energy seemed to be a negative polarity of cosmic energy. Let's call it dark cosmic energy, added Morgana. And you said I'm bad at naming. However, she chose to ignore him. The problem is where this thing originated. The Empire never discovered this aspect of cosmic energy. Is it some type of change due to the concentration? 
However, this conjecture does not seem to have much merit. Edward pondered for a moment, but he could not think of anything. So, he said, this energy should appear when the experiment begins. So, let's observe them and see if we can detect something. He did not hesitate and activated his time magic to see when the intelligence experiment began a few months back. He saw how everything was normal until a bright light appeared in the sky during the broad daylight. Then, everything changed for this planet. Soon, Edward sensed the weird energy that mutated the people into zombies. Morgana quickly recorded its fluctuation before ending the time spell. Then, Edward also began to search for the origin of the energy. He closed his eyes as he sensed. He soon found a direction. The multiverse? He continued searching and soon found himself in the blank realm, looking at the infinite timelines. Blank realm, the space between timelines. Also, the place black holes send things it swallows. No, something is wrong, said Edward while in this mind projection state. There is a dark, depressing, and negative aura surrounding the timeline, I noticed. What's going on? Edward's mind jumped from one timeline to another, and he always felt this negative aura. He even sensed it while in the blank realm. Countless thoughts flashed in his mind as a term came into his mind. The Dark Multiverse? Chapter 476 The Dark Multiverse I The Dark Multiverse was something he came upon back in Primordial Earth when reading comics. It refers to a group of infinite timelines where everything goes wrong. In the normal multiverse, good and bad things coexist, similar to Yin and Yang. However, in the dark multiverse, nothing ever goes correctly. Only pain, death, and suffering exist. And because of its nature, the most powerful and cruelest entities live in the dark multiverse. It can be considered the most dangerous place in the entire universe. I did not expect the concept of dark multiverse to exist, committed Morgana, who shared senses with him. She did not contain her excitement. I cannot fathom how far our understanding of the multiverse will reach after studying it. She already imagines the papers the Empire will publish after studying this dark multiverse. There will be theories involving space-time, new understandings of matter and energy, advancement in dark and black magic and negative emotions, and even more profound research into cause and effect, especially negative karma. And these things were only the tip of the iceberg. Master, I have to say, your luck has been excellent recently, commented the little elf as she gave him a thumbs up. Too good, I would say, replied Edward. You mean? Edward nodded. His luck has always been excellent, maybe a perk from his reincarnation from primordial earth. And Merlin even admitted this was one of the reasons he accepted him as his student. And Edward knew of his outrageous luck after discovering the hole leading to the void that the Magus race left in Rowena's timeline. That hole was the only reason he could create omniversal travel while only being a tier 3. Otherwise, he would have to wait until tier 10 before he even had a chance at success. According to the many simulations he ran, if he did not discover that void crack, his research would lead him to discover other planes. As such, he would have escaped the plane where Harry Potter was located but never escaped the entire universe, also called the Astral Realm. Edward knew having access to the knowledge of other planes would fasten the Empire's development. However, it would never compare to the current state where he can use power systems from different universes, where he can study the laws or authorities of other universes. As for why his luck has been on the rise lately, even without the use of the Felix Felicis, he guessed it was Cronai's doing. To ensure the Empire's development and the gods' eventual downfall, she blessed the arcane empire with tremendous luck, and this act resulted in the birth of countless geniuses from different fields. It allowed the empire to survive dangerous situations, have an easier time succeeding in difficult problems, and many other benefits. In that case, we need to keep a good relationship with her, nodded Morgana, and Edward agreed with this sentiment. Let's check out this dark multiverse, commented Edward, who cast an astral projection spell. There were two main types of astral projections. The first was the soul leaving its dimension and surviving without the body. However, this version requires tier 6, when the soul is tangible and can survive a few months after the body is destroyed without help. And the second type involved using soul energy to shape a body before transferring some of the consciousness into this energy body. 
The advantage of this method is the caster will not be affected if something happens to the projection. However, the downside is the projection is incredibly weak compared to the soul or the main body. Edward's astral projection opened a portal to Earth in one of the infinite timelines of this dark multiverse. As soon as he arrived, Edward sensed things were different. He felt this suffocating depression as his mind was overwhelmed with negative thoughts and emotions. This place is disgusting to live in, commented Morgana. Is that nuclear waste I detected? Edward agreed with her words, so he decided to be swift and efficient. He cast a spell that allowed him to see places where great destiny resides. Then, his projection teleported to that destination while remaining invisible to the naked eye. After appearing, he saw the group of people hiding underground. These people looked miserable, malnourished, and their eyes were devoid of any life or hope. They ate their food in silence, and the few who spoke muttered with the lowest voice and were quick in their conversation. Look, said Morgana suddenly, and when Edward looked in her direction, his pupil flashed in surprise. He saw Ron Weasley holding a bottle of vodka and chugging it like water. Edward quickly noticed he had a metal prosthetic for an arm. Then, not long afterward, someone suddenly operat, making everybody alert. Their reaction was almost visceral until they realized who it was. Then, they sighed in relief. Harry, asked Edward, as the latter was too difficult to identify. Half of his face had a terrible scar, while the rest burned completely. How did it go? asked Ron in a gruff voice. The result was the same, replied Harry, his voice worse than gravel. His vocal cord obviously suffered significant damage, most likely burned. Roan did not respond as he expected this. He took a sip of his drink before taking out a locket from his shirt, opening it to reveal a picture, Hermione. Only one left, he said, his eyes full of determination. We only need to destroy the last Horcrux before we can kill this fucker. Then, I can finally join her. Harry looked at his friend, hiding the complication he felt deep in his eyes. It was his mission to kill Voldemort and save the people of this world. However, he also knew what awaited his friend once he achieved his mission. A small part of him wished they had never found that last Horcrux so his friend could continue accompanying him. However, he also knew being selfish in this situation was impossible. And it was not only because the world needed it. He knew his friend was only enduring out of sheer desire for revenge. If he cannot have his revenge after an extended period, his mind will no longer be able to bear it. By then, who knows what he will do. Furthermore, he was also tired. The wizards in South America might have discovered something. In a few days, I will go visit them. Good, replied Ron blandly. Edward and Morgana calmly watched this situation, wondering what happened to turn these two into this shape. Did you find out? asked Edward who knew the little elf was reading their memories. Yes, Voldemort was the final winner in the battle at Hogwarts. Longbottom never killed Nagini, and he went on to conquer the wizarding world before enslaving the Muggles. He then killed all the mudbloods of the magical world and 40% of Muggles. The remaining 60% were enslaved. And as you can guess, Hermione was on the casualty list. Edward sighed as he imagined what these two went through. He shook his head as he realized that most people he knew and cared for were dead in this timeline. I'm guessing there is no version of me in this timeline? From their memories, they've never heard of you. I either died under Voldemort or some other way. Or, this timeline derived from the main timeline where Edward Bones died as a child during the first Wizarding War, he analyzed. Boss, what do you want to do? Do you want to help them? From what I know about Voldemort, he would hide Nagini in a safe place after a few assassinations attempts. He knew the fear of death was deeply ingrained in the Dark Lord's soul. Find the location and give it to them, ordered Edward. Chapter 477 The Dark Multiverse 2 Morgana cast a spell that allowed her to search the entire planet. After discovering where Voldemort placed Nagina, she left a note in Harry Potter's quarter and a spiritual hint on the note so the latter would believe it. Then. Edward's astral projection opened a gate to another timeline. And as expected, the world was still dark and gloomy. Upon arrival, he immediately noticed the overall population of the Earth had drastically decreased. How many people are there? he asked. 
3.3 billion, replied Morgana. What year? 2007. Around that time, the population should have been twice that. So, what caused so many people to die in a few decades? He used the same technique to find the place with concentrated destiny and teleported. He found himself in a villa near Godric Hollow that he recognized. He frowned for a moment before entering. In a large room, two people were talking. To be precise, one man talked while the other, a woman, floated in the air, looking at the speaker with a blank. The speaker talked for a few minutes before the listener suddenly became transparent. The man suddenly panicked for a brief moment before taking his wand and activating a spell. Then, a black magic circle on the ground suddenly lights up. Countless black tentacles emerged from the ground. They were accompanied by screams of agony and hatred. The tentacles entered the woman's body, stabilizing her state. It seems like it's about time to replenish our stock, muttered the man, his voice containing worries. He proceeded to use his wand to send a message before continuing to talk to the floating woman. Edward watched all of this with a calm expression. Although he has seen many horrors and even did many of them, what he saw was still a little unsettling. I can't believe Dumbledore turned into this, said Morgana, her eyes penetrating the basement of this house where there were thousands of humans in captivity. She could sense the terrifying grievances, ghosts, and dark spirits bred in that dungeon and it was terrifying. Grief is truly a powerful emotion, commented Edward, who had already figured out what happened to this timeline without reading anyone's mind or doing much research. Dumbledore became enamored with the Resurrection Stone, one of the three Deathly Hallows. He used it to revive his sister, Ariana, whom he felt guilty about after believing he might have been the one who killed her. However, the Resurrection Stone is nothing but bait that Herpo, the Death God, used to lure powerful wizards to help escape his imprisonment. And that's exactly what Dumbledore did. The stone only summoned a shell of his sister's soul. And this shell could not stay long in the world of the living. So, in his madness to save her, Dumbledore began sacrificing souls to stabilize her. At first, he probably used some dark wizard in a vain attempt to keep his insanity and morality. However, things soon escalated and he enslaved the entire planet and used them as livestock to harvest their souls. In just a few decades, he absorbed the souls of billions of people to keep his sister's soul intact. Or so he thought. Most of these souls were Herpo's snacks, and the death energy created by so many killings was probably enough to escape and regain his full strength. Master, what should we do? Do you want to kill that bastard Herpo? Not now, replied Edward. Record the magic he is using and see if he can learn something new. Morgana scoffed in displeasure before recording Dumbledore's soul absorbing magic circle. I remember I created a project to fuse the same objects from different timelines to see if they will evolve into something unique. Yes, we have tried to fuse the ancient gods' godheads, but there has been no success as of yet. Edward wanted to see what would happen if he fused two time rooms from the Mystery of Department. What would happen? Unfortunately, these rooms were godheads from powerful creatures in the universe and could not be easily fused. Expand the project and try lesser objects like the Deathly Hallows, he ordered. The Hallows were created by Herpo, who is a Tier 8 Death God. However, they are only low-level items, but they are unique because they contain certain traces of divinity. All right. Edward continued his journey through this dark multiverse and only saw different Earths with devastating results. However, he also noticed a pattern. Something changed from the original Harry Potter timeline that deviated from the lives of certain people, leading them into darkness. For example, in one timeline, Hermione's mind broke after Bellatrix tortured her, and she became the new Dark Lord, leading chaos and destruction to the wizarding and muggle world. In another, Harry watched Ron die by Scabbers or Peter Pettigrew's hand. As a result, Voldemort's piece of soul corrupted his mind and became the new Dark Lord. In another, Ron became the Dark Lord after trying to destroy Voldemort's Horcrux, and the latter showed him an illusion of Harry and Hermione being together. Where are the timelines related to the Empire and us? asked Morgana after traveling for a few hours. Let's try again but use our new karma spell as a link to find a new timeline, said Edward, and they took a few minutes before opening the portal to the new timeline. 
As soon as they arrived, the group knew they were in the right place. They could be the Empire's official language mixed with other languages. Furthermore, they were now located on a battlefield with countless mages, golems, and ships. Both sides massacred each other, leaving the planet in a devastated state as countless Tier Four Arcanists launched their attacks without restraint. What the hell happened? asked Edward, who was uncomfortable after seeing the state of Earth and his empire. According to the memory of this battle's commander, the Arcane Empire suddenly went mad after an experiment. No one knew the exact reason, but there were rumors some type of demon or entity corrupted his soul. After his madness, he began to abuse his power. He became more brutal and fierce. Then, the royal family, led by his wives, tried to stop him. Sadly, the result was a full-out war between the two sides, causing catastrophe to the entire planet. I was corrupted? Well, that makes sense, commented Edward. But how did they manage to stop me? Did they activate my protocols? Hold on, and let me check. Less than five minutes later, she responded, Yes, the royal family and the members of the Illuminati banded together to deal with you, and they almost succeeded. I see. When did this happen? Around the time you reached Tier 5. Luckily, it was around this time. Otherwise, the consequences would have been more severe. I'm sure there are timelines where you went mad during your later tiers, uttered Morgana, and Edward gave her a deadly stare. Did I say something wrong? You are the kind of person who likes to play with fire. Without your extreme caution and severe paranoia, you would have long died or been corrupted due to your curiosity. What do you know? I'm the embodiment of the perfect arcanist. Great curiosity practiced using extreme caution. Whatever helps you sleep at night. The little elf rolled her eyes. What do you want to do? Do you want to interfere or check out other timelines? Chapter 478 The Intelligence Secret There is no need to intervene, replied Edward. It's not yet time for me to deal with the multiverse variants of myself, especially the dark, mad, twisted, and cruel versions. That would indeed be a nightmare, nodded Morgana. Regardless, we need a development plan for this dark multiverse. Obviously, we must study it and why it differs from the other multiverse, commented Edward. Secondly, this place is a resource-gathering spot. We can mine as many resources as we need. We should be able to create another Tier 10 floating city very soon, added Morgana. However, we have to worry about that force that stopped us from intervening in the multiverse. This place is full of chaos and violence. I doubt anyone will care about our mindless plunder. However, to be careful, we will slow down our mining of resources to a reasonable level. That's a good approach. However, this is not the most valuable thing about this discovery, said Edward, who looked into the sky. His eyes seemed to be glazing at something unknown. The mana grid, uttered Morgana. Correct. The mana grid means infinite mana and resources, said Edward. We need to find a timeline where the gods do not know about the grid, or they lost control of it. Then, we can harness its power for ourselves. When we return, I will create a team in charge of this mission, replied Morgana as she took note. We need a team to capture Herpo and Guznad if they exist in any of these timelines. These two are great ways to acquire more divine energy while the Milky Way galaxy is under the watch of the gods. That's a good idea, but these two might become even more powerful in this place. The dark multiverse seemed a place to favor evil and darkness. So, Morgana's words were not groundless. You're right, so we need to be more careful, nodded Edward. Lastly, warn the Time Aurors to set up defensive measures against threats from the dark multiverse. Will do. Edward nodded as he took one last look at this place before dispersing his astral projection. He returned to Planet Green Sour. He took one last look before stepping into his floating city. He waited until Morgana took over the intelligence monitoring system on this planet before heading to their current main habitat. The intelligence current main planet was called Chug, the fourth planet in a cane belt system. Upon arrival, Edward immediately detected signs this planet had recently terraformed to resemble their previous main planet. How long will it take you to infiltrate their system? asked Edward. With the previous data, Give me half an hour. All right, this was more than enough time to read a book, nodded Edward, 
who calmly waited. Then, when the time arrived, she appeared before him. Done, said Edward as he closed the book. Yes, and I've found something. Oh, there is a place with extremely advanced technology. How advanced are we talking about? It would take me days to break into their system with my current state. That is indeed advanced. The intelligence were never this powerful. Do you have any information on this place? Yes, replied Morgana as she showed him a screen. It is the main lab of the most talented scientist of the intelligence, Albert Sucharts. Edward saw a picture of a man in his middle thirties with blonde hair and blue eyes. He looked handsome by all human standards. However, his face displayed great stoicism. The first impression of this man to anyone who met was he was extremely serious and was probably dull to converse with. Who is this scientist? That's another odd point. There is little to no information released about him to the public. So far, all I know is he rescued countless intelligence after the fall of darkness and gathered them together. The people believed him as a savior since he preserved the intelligent civilization by saving most of their technology. He even improved on them. However, his approval with his people has plummeted recently. Is it because of the cosmic energy experiments? Yes. The intelligence have not completely removed their feelings towards supernatural slash extraordinary powers despite the current situation. However, Albert advocates for them. Such a closed-minded and extreme civilization would not last long in this cruel cosmos, especially with how inflexible they are, commented Edward while shaking his head. This person should be our target. Let's check him out. Edward headed directly toward Albert's secret laboratory while remaining undetectable. It was a state-of-the-art lab with probably the best security on this planet. However, after being cautious, especially towards the energy sensors, he swiftly infiltrated this place and met Albert. At first sight, Edward knew something was wrong with this man. Did you see it? Yes, his mind is protected by a strange power, nodded Morgana. Edward looked directly at the man, and the latter sensed something and looked around. However, Albert saw nothing out of the ordinary and continued his work. That's the power of law, added Edward. Do you think? Most likely. Let's observe more. They observed Albert for the next few hours and found nothing new. Then, the man finally rested, but the two did not move. They prepared to spend the next few days secretly observing. Luckily, they did not have to wait long. After sleeping less than three hours, Albert suddenly woke up and summoned a holographic projection before him. He then began to draw the schematic for a new application of dark matter as an energy source. Another breakthrough from my dream, muttered Albert, his eyes seeming lost and hopeful simultaneously. I guess we now know what's happening, commented Edward, who deduced the situation. So, he quietly left just as he came and returned to his city before contacting Olivier. What's the situation? she asked. If I guess correctly, some tier 10 gods from outside have a way to bypass Guznad's blocking, explained Edward. They use dream revelation to grant the intelligence with technology. Their plan should be to cultivate a pawn that can intervene in the current situation. The situation is about to reach a tipping point. The last thing we need is outside intervention, groaned Olivier. Do you have any idea who it is? Our information about the gods residing in the central region is limited. However, we can narrow it down since such a feat would require tier 10 powers and artificer or technology authority. There is no point in worrying about this now. The real issue is, what do you want to do with the intelligence? A part of me wants to eradicate them and remove the trouble. The intelligence were too much of a hostile group, so it was impossible to integrate them into the empire without extreme measures with great risks. Another part wants to use this opportunity to get technology from these gods. Assuming your assumption is correct, the Tier 10 god will never give technology that surpasses Tier 9 to prevent any backlash. So, as long as we have Netheril, we should have no problem using them as leeches. We only need to monitor all their movements. In that case, let's do that. Then, what do we do with them once they are no longer useful? Try to incorporate them. If not, kill them, or be merciful by sending their planet into another dimension. I don't really care. All right. With just a casual conversation, they decided the fate of an entire civilization. Sadly, 
That is the fate of the weak in the universe. Chapter 479 The Elves What's on your mind? You seem a little distracted, suddenly asked Olivier, who noticed his absent-mindedness. I am worrying about Guznad's protective shield around this galaxy, replied Edward. The think tank has brought up this issue as well, nodded Olivier. They fear Guznad will apply a mutual destruction tactic and remove the protection before we defeat him, allowing the gods to access the Milky Way. And even if we defeat him without this worse outcome, there is a chance we might not find the artifact he was using for the shield, leaving us vulnerable. Then, there is the fact that this protective measure is not absolute since the gods can use dreams to send messages, added Edward with a groan. The Empire is not remotely ready to face the gods of this universe. So, Guznad's protection works in Edward's favor. As such, this has become an issue that needs to be dealt with. Do you have any solution? asked Olivier. Surrounding the entire galaxy with a shield is not an issue. However, the issue is to have one that can keep all these gods at bay. I did find inspiration for my voyage to Black Clover, Edward said as he remembered the fog surrounding the world as protection. I can replicate the fog as it could perfectly isolate the galaxy. However, as you said, the real issue is to protect from all these gods. We will need at least two tier 10 ether core to power the fog. You might as well not say anything, Olivier rolled her eyes. They went to so much trouble to create one netheral. So, even if they only needed the resources to create the energy core, that was impossible. Especially since they needed them before the war ended. The Empire could try to plunder more planes for energy, but that was dangerous. So, the only solution to this problem might be for Edward to make another voyage to some universe to gather energy. If it was before, it might be impossible. However, with our recent discovery, the situation is salvageable. Oh, what happened? Edward sent her the information about the Dark Multiverse, and Olivier immediately knew the implications of such a discovery. Your luck truly baffles me, said Olivier with a smile and a sigh. What can I say? I'm so handsome and intelligent that even the universe loves and cherishes me. Olivier ignored him and continued her work. Our next target is the elves. Do I need to meet their queen and king? asked Edward. No, they rejected our request for a diplomatic visit. However, they agreed to a video communication. Even after everything that has happened, they are still stubborn, Edward shook his head. That's because their situation changed. Did something new happen? Yes. According to our spies, the elf queen, Myrtle, had awakened some of her son elves' bloodline. Olivier Siged. The situation changed everything. The king and elder council who once favored surrendering to us now completely obey the queen. Bloodline awakening? Did she reach tier 9 or something? No, tier 8. Edward had a look of confusion. With her new bloodline, she was able to heal their sacred tree, Validator. With it, she could barely deal with one of Guznad's clones. This doesn't change much. At best, they can prolong their struggle against Guznad. True. Unfortunately, the queen seemed xenophobic, and with her bloodline, she now has absolute control of the council and the elf race. All right, when is the meeting? Hold on. I will contact them and set it for tomorrow. Olivier placed the screen on standby before contacting the relevant department to contact the elves. A few minutes later, she appeared again. However, Edward saw her eyebrows twisted, a sign she was angered. What happened? They rescheduled to three days later. Edward was silent for a moment. Fine. He returned home to meet his family and cashed on the promise Olivier gave him after his return. Then, three days later, he met the elf queen. He dressed appropriately while sitting on his throne. Then, a large screen appeared before him. Queen Mythel. Your Majesty, said the queen with a blank face. Edward frowned slightly before continuing the conversation. Less than an hour later, the conversation ended, and Edward sat quietly on his throne. Then, a call came from Olivier. How was it? I knew these people were arrogant and delusional, but I didn't think it was to this point. That bad? She asked with a frown. What exactly happened? She probably wants us to help her fight Guznad, while retaining the independence of the Elf Kingdom. Oh, what is she offering in exchange? That's the funny part. 
At first, she made it seem as if it was our honor to help them, said Edward, shaking his head. Then, she offered a unique specialty for Valider. However, she never specified what the specialty was. So, are they hard to get along with? muttered Olivier with displeasure. We can wait until Guznat attacks them before we once again reach out. With the integration of the dwarves and the star race, Guznad will never watch as we incorporate the elves. So, he should be planning an attack on them soon. No need. Pardon me? We don't need to incorporate the elves in the Empire anymore. Hey, I understand the Queen offended you and hurt your pride, but this is not the time to be acting emotionally. You should give me more credit than that. Do you have a plan? These elves are too arrogant and not suited for integration, just like the intelligence. Instead, we will let Guznad wipe them out while we clone them. Clone? Yes, we will send our people to secretly control one of the elders. Using their powers, we can start a national project to gather the blood of all the elves as an attempt to study the Sun Elf bloodline and have more people awaken it. With this opportunity, we can gather a genetic databank of their entire population. Once they are wiped out, we can clone them with empty memories, making them easier to integrate into the Empire. That's not a bad idea, replied Olivier after pondering for a while. Before then, we must access all the knowledge of their civilization. We can even access the bloodline memories of the Sun Elves, added Edward. All right, this will be our new approach for dealing with the Elves. I just brought back a group of ninjas. Send them on this mission. Isn't it too much for their first mission? They need to prove their worth. Plus, I trust in Itachi's ability. If you say so. Olivier ended the conference call to continue her commanding duty. Meanwhile, Edward called Morgana. How is Chris doing? He's currently tier 4 and is still studying to catch up. Once he begins his experiment, give him access to our knowledge on hockey. It should help him with his research. All right. Edward stood up and stretched. This war should be ending soon. Now, we must consider how to properly rule an entire galaxy. He pondered for a moment before realizing this was not something for him to worry about. This headache was for his Aunt Amelia. While thinking about her, he suddenly remembered his cousin, Susan, who said she was working on a new project. Let's check on her. Chapter 480 Susan's research. Can I come to check in? asked Edward as he sent Susan a message. Why, all of the sudden? You talked about your new project, and you seem excited. So, I wanted to see what it was. Susan did not immediately reply. All right. Edward smiled and waited a while. Then, he received permission to teleport to her laboratory. Your Majesty, saluted the other researchers before continuing with their work. Edward did not mind as he established the spirit of the empire. And based on his words, the spirit of pursuing knowledge is above everything, maybe even the imperial power. As such, when visiting any laboratory, people only need the minimum salutation. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, like an official visit from the government or other official events. Come, let me show what I'm working on, said Susan, who was waiting for him. She led him to a lab testing site, a small stadium surrounded by magical shields. Your lab is a little small, commented Edward. As a member of the royal family, she has access to unimaginable resources. So, the current size of her laboratory was subpar by his standard. I wanted to fund this research myself before presenting it and get funding, said Susan. Well, as long as you're happy, nodded Edward. So, what are you working on? He tried to contain his excitement to not put too much pressure on her. Susan was a talented arcanist and should have been one of the most successful tower masters in the Empire. After all, she was trained by Edward from an early age. Unfortunately, as the Empire grew, she could not bear the pressure of being a princess and Edward Bone's cousin. People expected too much of her and her future achievements. So, she chose to become a magical painter removing herself from any jobs related to research and so on. But, even with such a chance, people expected too much from her. Edward was a little disappointed by her choice, but he never showed it. He supported her to the best of his ability, suppressing the public's voice to the limit of his power. However, it appeared she now had rekindled her desire for research. My research is this, said Susan with a smile as she gave him a card. 
Yu-Gi-Oh card? Edward asked before sensing odds with the card. Could it be? Yes, replied Susan before waving the card. I summoned the Dark Magician. The card shone with brilliant light before a creature appeared inside the protected testing area. Edward looked at the creature he saw many times in the anime, which looked exactly like the one from his childhood. Is this an application of painting magic? Yes. Through painting, I can make these characters come back to life. Does it have any ability? Yes and no. The cards I created can use some basic spells. However, remember how the three god cards had their own will when you first created the game. When Edward first created the Egyptian gods using spiritual magic, the three had their own will, were overbearing, and would not allow just anyone to wield them. Is it the same situation? Yes, and it's not just the three. Many powerful paintings have shown this phenomenon, explained Susan. What's the direction you're going? What is your expectation? I want to first create the abilities of these cards. Then, I wish they would become real creatures. However, that is far-fetched for now. Edward did not offer his comment yet. Do you have a plan for the next step? Yes, she replied with twinkling eyes. Edward had never seen her so excited. When she was young, she loved reading the comic Yu-Gi-Oh! and dueling in general. In Hogwarts, she was the dual champion for seven years consecutively. Edward even believed she did not skip grades like many others because of her passion for the game. I'm glad she can find something she truly loves and is passionate about, thought Edward as he listened to her explanation. At first, I had no direction on how to copy the card's ability until I saw real Boyce Mortier's painting magic. The former magic captain from Black Clover had a magic that allowed his painting to come to life and display a variety of magic. I will use it as a basis to create the cards and their powers, explained Susan. However, that's only the first stage. For the second stage, I plan to use the spirit world you brought back. Edward also brought back a spirit world he acquired from the eastern continent of the Black Clover universe. Do you want to create spirits based on these cards? asked Edward. Yes. According to your conjecture, the spirit world will create spirits based on the myths, legends, and stories of the world connected to it. And these cards have been in the Empire before its inception and are part of our culture. With the right aid, it should be possible to accelerate the creation of these spirits. That's a good method, but you also know there is any concrete proof that my conjecture is correct. So, how do you plan to use it to accelerate the birth of these spirits? Susan did not answer him but smiled instead. What's wrong? Nothing. I just remember when we were young and you were tutoring me. You never answered my questions and instead asked me thousands more questions. Edward paused before placing his head on her head and sighing, I never met for things to turn like this. It's not your fault. I just couldn't handle everything. Edward shook his head. I never should have tried to model you into me. You are your own person and should have your own path. Edward knows his flaws. When he sees someone with magical talent, he tries to gear them in the direction of magic research. He wants as many people to walk the same path as him. However, sometimes, he fails to take into account the person's wishes and desires. Susan was a victim of this, and his two apprentices, Flynn and Emily, almost suffered the same fate. Luckily, he learned from his mistake and did not prevent them from becoming archaeologists. Susan hugged him. It's all in the past now. Let's not talk about such a thing. She changed the subject. To answer your question, my plan is to study faith, the preliminary research on creating heroic spirits, and the ancestral spirit magic from different ethnicities to find a method. Faith, or the power of belief, is the right way for this research, nodded Edward. So, what do you think? It's great research. Once you succeed, you will be a pioneer in summoning magic. You think so too, said Susan with a smile. Do you have any recommendations? I thought you wouldn't want my output. How many arcanists would sell their entire fortune to get your opinions and suggestions on their research? I am not stupid enough to pass off such an opportunity. I'm glad you finally acknowledge my greatness, replied Edward with a smug look, and Susan just rolled her eyes. She knew of her cousin's narcissism. Stop playing around, she chimed. All right, I have a few things from my previous voyage that can help you. Edward waved his hand to create a screen to show her something. 
Chapter 481 Internal Trouble The first one is I received data on a real heroic spirit, said Edward. Heroic spirit? I thought you were going to the Naruto universe. Whenever Edward went to a place, his family would normally know the story or development of the world. So, Susan was confused. Are the reanimated people considered heroic spirit? Edward suddenly paused. No, but that's an interesting concept to think about. Someone should study these two and see if they can come up with something. However, we have to wait until we have heroic spirits. So, what are you talking about? asked Susan. It would be too long to explain. Edward placed his hand on her forehead and passed some of his experience to her. Your voyage is always full of wonder uttered Susan with a sigh. Then, her eyes became bright as she thought of something. The Yu-Gi-Oh! universe is real, correct? Ha, huh, yes. Can I go? She asked with anticipation. And Edward's first instinct was to reject her on account of safety. However, he calmed down as he realized this was an opportunity for Susan to continue her growth and discover herself. As such, he was very entangled. If you're worried, you can take me, she added. No, there is no need. I can't always protect you, said Edward with a sigh. Once the war finishes and we settle everything, there should be more floating cities. Afterward, you can travel to that universe on your own. However, you have to pay for the coordinate and take all the safety precautions. No, replied Susan without a hint of hesitation. Once her research has some results, she will have enough points to exchange the coordinates with the Akashic records. As for the safety measures, even if he did not say anything, she would have done so after knowing of the danger of the void. All right, nodded Edward before continuing his previous topic. Besides the data on heroic spirits, you can use word soul magic. Hum, this type of magic can rewrite reality at a low level using words. If engraved in the cards, it could do wonders, analyzed Susan and agreed with this proposition. Finally, it's something from my recent voyage added Edward before showing her another spell. It's the jutsu called creation of all things that allows you to turn fantasy into reality, achieving the power of creation. Now, this spell does not translate well into the mana system, so you'll have to use chakra, and the limit of its power is tier 6. In other words, can I create the creatures in these cards along with their power? asked Susan, more excited than ever. Don't get too ahead of yourself. As I said, this thing is limited before we can translate into our mana system or further develop the chakra system. That's fine. I already have an idea of how to make up for some of the problems. Oh, I'm all ears. If I can create the spirits of these creatures and use them as a medium, it will be easier to turn them from fantasy into real creatures. That's not a bad idea, commented Edward, nodding in approval. For such an excellent idea, I will give you some world source to accelerate your research. Deal, replied Susan. Any more ideas? She continued. You could try the approach of dream energy and work with Chloe. Manifesting them in a dream before bringing them to reality? That's a good method. Then, she looked at him with longing eyes. That's all I have, he shrugged. Plus, this is your research. Well, it's more than enough. Edward chatted with her for a moment before leaving. Morgana, what's my schedule? There is nothing currently on the table, but you should probably meet the Black Clover Captains. Oh, is something wrong? Not really, but they are having some trouble settling in. All right, I will go see them tomorrow, replied Edward. Schedule a session for now, as you wish. Edward headed to his lab without a hint of joy. He hated his illusion sessions. However, he had to do them. After arriving at his meditation room, he closed his eyes and entered the illusion. A few minutes later, he opened his eyes, his eyes red and a terrifying aura emanating from his body. Luckily, the room was surrounded by enchantments. Otherwise, the entire solar system would have trembled under his wrath. It's maddening, said Edward as he drank a potion to soothe his mind and soul. Slowly losing his family is one thing but the fact that he cannot do anything to save or revive him always drives him to madness. Take a five-minute break before continuing, said Morgana, and Edward mechanically nodded. Yang. Yeah. Before the break finished, Edward sensed a subtle vibration. What's going on? With this room's protection, 
This should not be the case. The source is coming from Earth, replied Morgana, who did a rapid search. From what Earth? Did something happen? I'm trying to find the source, replied the little elf, and Edward had to leave his training and appear above the sky on Earth while invisible. Soon, his Aunt Amelia's holographic screen appeared before him. What's going on? he asked. What do you mean? I just sense a fluctuation from Earth capable of affecting the entire planet. Although it was subtle, it was there. Amelia frowned as she immediately checked and contacted the relevant department. Our sensors did not detect anything, she replied with worry in her eyes. They were monitoring every planet under the Empire's rule and energy fluctuations were the highest bullet points in the monitoring lists. After all, a Tier 6 Arcanist can eradicate the planet with one spell. So, they have to monitor any large or unknown energy fluctuation. However, his nephew just told him something bypassed their sensors. Did you use the new sorcerer eyes? asked Edward. They are still in the manufacturing process, so we haven't deployed them yet. In the Naruto world, he created the defense system of the Empire through the invention of new satellites or sorcerer eyes that used Biagigan as the core of their technology. Deploy the ones you already manufactured and ask Luna to see if she can find anything. Amelia quickly deployed, and her orders were fast and efficient. Less than five minutes later, new sorcerer eyes floated above the planet, searching for the source of the energy fluctuation. The answer is negative, she replied with a frown, and Edward had a serious look. Another screen appeared before him, showing Luna's face. As soon as she appeared, she shook her head. I'm drawing blank. In that case, the situation might be more dangerous than anticipated, muttered Edward. The two became serious after hearing this. They did not doubt his words since no one was more sensitive to energy than Edward on the planet. Morgana, any information? I could not pinpoint the location of the energy, but I did not analyze its essence. It was a spatial fluctuation. Spatial energy? Then things are easier. Edward closed his eyes and took control of the space-time rules. In his mind, he sensed the countless dimensions, both artificial and innate, surrounding the planet. He remembered the energy fluctuation he sensed and compared it with the thousands of dimensions. Found it, he saw before showing the two something. Who is the owner of this demi-plane? According to our record, it's a Tier 7 Arcanist called James Carter, replied Morgana. Why is he breaking the law and causing spatial fluctuations capable of influencing the planet? asked Luna with confusion. I think I know why, said Amelia, who pulled up a document to show the group. Chapter 482 Complications Twelve hours ago, the IGD, Information Gathering Department, received information that James was involved in suspicious activities, said Amelia. After analyzing the news, the Ore Department invited him for interrogation. Wait, why didn't they take care of the matter themselves? asked Edward. He knew this was a time of war, so the intelligence department's power reached an unprecedented level. So, it's odd they did not arrest James themselves. They have been getting too powerful lately, so I've been using the ore department to quell their growth, explained Amelia. She saw the intelligence department start to get out of control, so she began to suppress their rights and power. Harry has been a great help in the process. You should give him some reward after the war. Amelia did not mention a promotion since Harry recently took over the entire ore department of Earth. I will. This is not the time for this, chimed Luna. You're right, said Amelia before continuing. The time of the fluctuation corresponds to the time the ores should have arrived. Something happened to them, thought Edward. Even if they fought, there should not be any fluctuation. During the war, we have lost too many people inside demiplanes and dimensions. So, we created new ways to ask for help in case of danger, explained Amelia. My guess is the fluctuation is the result of James trying to keep the signal from departing. You might be right. Under normal circumstances, such fluctuation would remain undetected, and only a freak like Edward would discover. You should move swiftly, added Luna. James might be preparing for his escape. Edward nodded. After killing the Empire's people, his next course would be to run away. Don't worry. I already blocked his demiplane, said Edward. One last thing. Why did the intelligence department take 12 hours to act on a piece of information? I'm fine if you want to weaken their power. 
but their efficiency must be better. Many things can happen in the span of 12 hours, so Edward was not happy with such a long delay. There is too much information to process every second, replied Amelia, shrugging. James' information was not verified and was not labeled as the highest priority. Don't we have AI? asked Edward. Because of you, we are only using the lowest level, explained Amelia with a sigh. I tried to change things during this time of war, but the anti-artificial intelligence factions have become a headache, using you to make trouble for me. Edward groaned. He was not happy with AI having access to the Empire's highest secrets. As long as we have Netheril, we don't have to worry about the threat of AI. So, you can use it more widely. Excellent, said Amelia, with joy in her voice. With the widespread use of AI, many departments of the Empire will enter an era of ultimate efficiency, making her job easier. All right, I'll deal with James. Edward disappeared and appeared inside another demiplane. He easily forced himself inside despite the protest of its owner. As soon as Edward entered, he saw a desolate city with a magnificent tower at the center. Demiplanes are private properties of Arcanus, where they are basically the rulers. However, there are rules to follow. The people inside the demiplanes are citizens of the empire and are protected by law. So, the owner of the demiplane cannot treat them in certain ways. This rule is to prevent these people with godlike powers from enslaving weaker individuals. As such, most arcanists with a private demiplane will fill it with automatons. Based on the data he read, James' demiplane contained countless people working for him. But now, Edward could not see a soul. He controlled his anger before flying to the tower at the center. He sensed residual energy aura and guessed this was the place the aurors confronted James. Why don't you stop wasting our time and come out? said Edward, as his voice penetrated the magic tower and sent his message inside. The biggest mistake was to enter an arcanist magic tower. However, this point was useless, given the vast difference between their strength. Regardless, Edward decided to be careful. No one answered him, so Edward raised his hand to create a miniature star, prepared to pulverize the tower with one attack. Swish! The tower disappeared, and James appeared. Edward purposely looked in the distance. He knew James sent the tower to another dimension, so he could prevent him from destroying it. Then, James can continue to access the energy from the tower to boost his strength. Finally, Edward focused on James, blonde hair, brown eyes, slightly muscular, and a well-defined jawline. However, he did not care about these things. Edward could see a red light flash deep in his pupils. Furthermore, his overall aura was different. Your mana? You discovered it? I guess I should not be surprised. The abyss corrupted you? How is that possible? He could sense dark mana from James' body. The concept of dark mana was long theorized after the Empire discovered different energies. No actual development manifested from this theory until Edward brought Dr. Jekyll from the Mummy 4 world, and it was finally proven to be true after the Empire encountered the abyss plane. However, Knowledge about the abyss and dark mana is the highest secret, only known to a few people in the royal family and the Illuminati. Hee hee hee, why are you surprised? When you look into the abyss, it gazes back, said James Carter with a twisted laugh. Are you related to Guznad? Is he the one who used the abyss to corrupt you? Him? Is he worthy? Yes, something is odd. Even if Guznad had access to the legacy of the Magus race, there is no way he could completely bypass our system. Luna used Netheril for her divination, but did not get anything, which is abnormal. Does he have the help of an Abyss Prince, Tier 10? No, maybe even the Legendary King, Tier 11. Edward recently confirmed the existence of Tier 11 in the Wizard World, so it's not out of pocket that the Abyss has one too. Edward looked at James, and the latter felt every single thing about him was being seen through, and he hated this feeling. So, James began to release his power, preparing for a confrontation. I sense a subtle will in your body, continued Edward. I see. This is not just the work of a king. The abyss will is also involved, trying to interfere in the affairs of our plane. If there ever was a plane that will wishes to swallow, it would be the birthplace of the Magus race. The only issue is why would Guznad risk everything to work with abyss demon? He should know the result. 
James Carter made a growling sound before creating a large sun made of dark fire. The intensity of that attack reached Tier 8 because he used his arcane spark to boost his spell with the karma he had gathered. Wish. James' spell suddenly disappeared as if it was never here. Anti-magic? He said in shock. He remembered the library was recently updated and there was knowledge about anti-magic on it. However, the classification of anti-magic was very high. James was flustered for a moment before regaining his bearing. He was an arcanist, the perfect magical class. Without hesitation, he controlled the earth and metal energy coming from the city in his demiplane. Yes, good response, commented Edward, who proceeded to forcibly regain control of the earth and metal energy of this entire place, once again rendering James powerless. How is that possible? It's a new ability I've recently learned after increasing my energy control talent, explained Edward briefly. He acquired too many chances during his trip to Naruto. If I guess correctly, Guznad must be playing a dangerous game. He probably cannot keep the outside gods for too long. So he wished to deal with us with the abyss before breaking up his words and forcing you, demons, back to your plane. What a stupid decision. The moment Guznad chose to work with the abyss, his fate was doom. He would forever be unable to live peacefully in this plane as the gods will hunt him down to their last breath. What do you know? said James as he mobilized the aura inside his body, preparing for a close combat battle. Edward shook his head before suddenly stopping. Then, his face turned ugly. No, you're only a sacrificial pawn, a distraction. Chapter 483 Plot Ha ha ha, you finally noticed? said James with an eerie smile as he rushed toward Edward with unparalleled speed. He concentrated his aura on his fist, preparing a punch capable of doing devastating destruction to a star. However, Edward instantly cast a gravity spell that increased the surrounding gravity by a hundred thousand times that of Earth, crushing James on the floor. Hokuto, yelled Edward, and his dragon spirit manifested in this place with all its glory. Deal with him. The dragon nodded before using its claws to create layers of barriers upon James, sealing him and all his powers. In the meantime, Edward had already left. He activated his cosmic awareness and sensed danger originating from one of the other demi-planes. Without wasting time, he used his space-time rules to force his way inside. As soon as he arrived at his destination, he knew he was at the correct place. Someone was floating in the air with countless enchantments on the ground and in the air. Wentworth, said Edward with gritted teeth. He knew this arcanist. His name was Edward Wentworth III. He was not a tower master despite reaching Tier 7. However, Edward remembered his theory on the relationship between memories, the spirit, the mind, and the soul. He talked to the latter and chose to call him Wentworth since they had the same first name. You're too late said Wentworth before a terrifying energy wave emanated from his body. Such a spell will not only affect Earth but destroy the solar system and the surrounding dozens of star systems, thought Edward, not hiding his anger. I guess I should admire you. You can be calm even in such a situation, said Wentworth with a sneer. Then, a smile appeared on his face as he watched his masterpiece complete. Edward raised his hand, and Wentworth shook his head in pity. A green magic circle appeared before Edward. Then, everything stopped. The green flames that went work would ravage the center of the empire, killing billions of people. Went work himself, the magic circles in the ground and sky. Everything stopped moving. Well, except for two people. T. Time magic? On this scale? Muttered Wentworth, ignoring the fact only his mouth could move. It was not surprising the Emperor could use time magic since it is one of the most powerful and fascinating magic in the cosmos. There is a list in the Empire of Arcanists with the talent and capabilities of using time magic. And Wentwork knew that amongst these people, even the Empire only had a rudimentary control over time magic. The latter might be able to affect objects the size of an apple, but nothing bigger. Furthermore, it could not yet affect living things. Ha ha ha! Everyone underestimates how many secrets you have. They don't know how truly scary you are, said Wentworth with a deep sigh. Regretting now? asked Edward as he flew over to him. There is no point in regret. Losing is losing. Is this what this is about? You want to win over me, 
said Edward, controlling his anger. Maybe, maybe not. So, what did Guznad offer you for such a betrayal? Wentworth did not answer him, but Edward did not mind. You should understand you cannot hide the truth from me, persuaded Edward. You're arrogant, so I doubt you would allow anyone to place any seals in your soul. So, there should be a contract. However, there are hundreds, if not thousands, ways to annul or bypass a contract. So, I will spare your last dignity if you tell the truth. Wentworth was silent for a moment. He offered me control over a plane. Edward squinted his eyes. So, the rumors are true. You do already know about other planes. After Havica created his mathematical model and became a tower master, the existence of other planes was almost confirmed among high-level arcanists. There were even rumors the royal family had already discovered planes and were using their resources for their own. A few people even guessed that the emperor suddenly disappeared and returned with a bunch of new knowledge because of conquering other planes. So, you thought your life would be more successful after conquering one plane? I have seen with my own eyes. Most magical civilizations cannot reach beyond Tier 4 because of the lack of knowledge, said Wentworth. Mages simply do not have enough knowledge to increase their soul strength and reach higher tiers. So, they have to resort to drinking potions, weird ceremonies, and slow and inefficient meditation methods to increase their soul. And while they also have to worry about the increase of mana, most human mages cannot reach Tier 4 where they can increase their lifespan and die a mediocre life. Why are you so powerful? Asked Wentworth with red eyes. It's because you have an entire empire researching and creating knowledge for you. Since you can do it, why can't I? Edward shook his head. Many of you believe it is easy to do what I did. However, you're the first one to hide your research like your life depends on it. With such a mindset, how could any of you create something like the Arcane Empire? He did not hide his sneer. Don't be a hypocrite. You also hide many things. Yes, I do. But what I do hide is minuscule compared to what I share. Wentworth did not know what to answer. Most arcanists agreed much knowledge in the Empire should not be available to the public or anyone for that matter, for example, time magic. However, with an affordable price and the signing of the appropriate contract, any Tier 4 arcanist can buy such research. He knew all of this was in the name of further developing magic and pushing its boundary. This does not change anything, argued Wentworth. However, his voice lacked certain convictions. Let me ask you, did it ever occur to you that Guznad was tricking you? I'm not stupid. So, I made sure there was nothing wrong with the contract. Did he offer you a tier 7 plane? What do you mean? You do know planes have levels, don't you? I, I wasn't aware. So, he only offered you a plane? What are you getting at? Wentworth snapped. Guznad could have just given you a tier 9 plane. With your current strength, you would only be discovered by the plane will and instantly annihilated. Wentworth's face was ugly to look at. From your reaction, I'm guessing you don't even know what a plane will is. Edward shook his head. He could tell what kind of person Wentworth was. Full of ambitions, arrogant, and yet, extremely ignorant while thinking he was smart. There is a reason higher beings do not know how to deal with lower ones besides strength. Their vision, experience, and knowledge are on a completely different level. Wentworth's face underwent numerous changes. Are you going to kill me? Yes, replied Edward. I. You don't have to say anything more. You've touched my bottom line. So you have to die, continued Edward. However, you can be reassured that your death will not be in vain since I will make an example of you. W.H., what do you mean? Your story will be used in classes throughout the Empire to teach young citizens of the consequences of trying to deal with devils, gods, or creatures of higher powers than themselves. You're going to use me as propaganda and brainwashing? yelled Wentworth. Well, I guess you could see it that way. Damn you. I. Wentworth's mouth became frozen in time and Edward waved his hand to burn his body before sealing his soul in a diamond. Then, he dealt with the green flame spell. Finally, he resumed the time that was stopped. Chapter 484 Royal Response Edward teleported to James Demiplane, and as he expected, Hokuto had already dealt with the threat by sealing the corrupted Arcanist. The dragon spirit handed him a small cube before disappearing. 
Edward could hear a sound coming from the cube in his palm. Any last word? What did you do? What are you all right? Asked James. I guess these are your last words, sneered Edward. You don't need to threaten me. I know how you operate. You will try every means to get more information from me. But I guarantee you won't succeed. James knew this man very well. This a person whose core values involved the word value. He loves geniuses because of their values. He embraces all races, ethnicities, and species because of their value as a collective. So, since he was more valuable alive, James believed he would be fine. And as long as he can withstand the torture, it's only a matter of time before the empire falls under the might of the abyss plane. Oh, silly James, you haven't realized your true value yet, said Edward with a smirk. Wait, you want to use me as an experimental material? Otherwise? You are the first corrupted arcanist capable of using dark mana. Your existence is way more valuable than any information I could extract from you. Furthermore, I'm sure your soul already has the mark of the abyss will. And with my current strength and knowledge, it would be futile to try to deal with it. However, it is worth studying. No, you can't do this. The Empire's law forbade using other arcanists as experimental materials. If you do this... The royal family cannot survive the backlash. Your ironclad rule or control of the empire will be shaken. You underestimate my control over my country, rebutted Edward. Plus, this law has a loophole. Such a protection is not afforded to heinous criminals or traitors such as yourself. Edward loved and cherished his empire. After all, it is his baby that he spent years building from the ground up. However, he did not need the empire as much as it needed him. If people revolted against his reign, he could just begin a new and better empire on another galaxy, plane, or universe. The Arcane Library, which contains 90% of the entire empire's knowledge and technology, will make the process a hundred times easier. So, if he needs to abandon everything from Earth and start from scratch, he is more than capable of doing so. Edward placed James away before teleporting back to his palace, and as soon as he arrived, he accepted all the calls waiting for him. More than a dozen screens appeared before him as the royal family and the members of the Illuminati called him simultaneously. What happened? asked Amelia. Why was time stopped? All the people present have three magical items they must carry with them at all times. A anti-time stopping item, anti-instant death item, and a void teleportation spell item that stores a small portion of void energy that can break through any space blockade spells, allowing them to run away in a dangerous situation. As such, they were the few people capable of moving during Edward's time stop. Of course, the main reason is that they were not the main target. Edward explained the entire situation to everyone. How did they bypass our defense system? asked Dumbledore. Has the intelligence and divination department become so incapable? asked Grindelwald. Don't blame the divination department. We're already overworked, chimed Luna. Recently, their department received two new seers, Miko Satoru and Yami's sister, the Divine Maiden. With these two, things have eased a lot in their department. However, Luna has been easing them into their station so as not to place them under too much pressure. I'm sure your highness is doing her best. However, you can also see the consequences of failures replied Grindelwald, and Luna had to agree. In some ways, their department is the first line of defense of the Empire, and their failure almost caused the destruction of the central area of the Empire. Such a blow would not destroy the Empire, but would cripple it for the next few hundred years. And as long as Guznad took this opportunity, it could truly be the end. We need to indeed expand the amount of diviners. But you know very well such talent is rare. Expend the pools we have to choose from. Do you mean the multiverse? Asked Luna. But, we are currently banished from accessing it. You can also go to other planes, explained Edward. Plus, I was referring to the dark multiverse? Dark multiverse? What's that? I already updated the information in the library. You can check it. Forget that for now. We have not discovered how Guznad bypassed our defenses. If that problem is not solved, we cannot solve the issue from the core, commented Olivier. If I guess correctly, it should be through dream, said Edward. Dream revelation? Olivier suddenly remembered that intelligence named Albert. Indeed, 
That seems to be the most common way the gods talk to their followers. Now we know the method. What solutions do we have? Asked Amelia. We can just create a dream dimension as a barrier to the Empire's territory, suggested Rowena. This should be no problem for Chloe. That's a good idea. With this dimension, it's possible to intercept any dream revelations from gods or higher beings in the future, agreed Amelia. Since they were destined to be the enemy of the gods, they needed to be prepared for all possibilities. More than that, we can use dreams to gather information, assassination, and even plant suggestions into people's minds, added Grindelwald. Such a method could create major backlash if discovered, swiftly argued Dumbledore, who opposes using the dream for such a method. Although he supported the Empire after seeing the cruelty of the universe, he also did not want things like severe monitoring to become common in the Empire. And many people like Lily and Flittick agreed with him. Plus, most Arcanists stop sleeping and dreaming after a certain tier. This method is not effective. If they don't dream, we make them dream, added Grindelwald. There is no need to go this far on how people, countered Rowena. But, we don't need such restraint on foreign powers. Set up the dimension and relevant department, Edward said, making a decision. We need dream orrs, intelligence gatherers, and assassins. We don't have to use it on the citizens, unless there is reasonable cause. Very well, uttered Amelia, since this is her department. Now, how do we deal with the outside reaction? Although only these people were not affected by the spell, the other arcanists quickly found something was wrong especially since only the time of planet Earth stopped. With communication with other colonies, their own intuition, and the input of the few known arcanists capable of using time magic, people soon discovered what happened. Tell them the truth, said Edward. If the news that we can stop time around an entire planet, many people will not easily accept such a thing. This could lead to chaos, said Amelia with a frown. These powerful arcanists will not easily accept that someone could so easily control their lives even though they already know this to be a fact once the floating cities appear. We can minimize the impact if we say it was an artifact from the Time Oris Department, said Edward. These people might more easily accept this fact if they don't know he did it with his own strength. Plus, I plan to have a chat with them. Once I'm done, they won't dare openly complain, continued Edward. The Time Auror is a semi-open secret. So, it would be easier to accept, agreed Amelia. The more important thing is after this incident, many of these people will begin to study anti-time magic, leading to many brilliant ideas and developments, said Edward with glowing eyes. Everyone nodded with him. All right, you can continue with your own thing. Luna, stay. I have something to say to you, said Edward. Chapter 485. More Control. Is this about the divination department? Asked Luna. You should know things are beyond my ability. No. Edward shook his head. I wouldn't blame you for something like that. Oh, then, what did you want? Edward paused, his hesitation obvious from his facial expression. Luna looked at him weirdly. Are you going to ask me to do something morally outrageous again? Edward's mouth almost twitched. It's not as bad as you make it sound. What is it this time? She asked with an exasperated sigh. I just had an idea on how to boost the strength of the divination department. And that would be? Edward no longer hesitated and replied, Take countless variants of yourself from the multiverse, purify their seer bloodline before connecting their minds together, forming an amplifier, allowing them their ability to reach new heights. You want to use my variants from the multiverse as some sort of battery or divination artifact? When you put it that way, it sounds worse than it sounds. And how exactly do you think that sounds? We can erase their memories so they don't feel any pain. Luna's bloodline was special, making it impossible to clone her. And even the successful clones lost her seer abilities. So this plan has to use different versions of herself from the multiverse. That sounds even worse, argued Luna. They would be nothing but objects once you succeed. We will be using the versions from the dark multiverse, meaning they would all be evil. And that won't make the situation any better. Based on what you said about the dark multiverse, these people turned evil because of one or two events that went wrong in our timelines. In other words, they are the way they are because of fate and circumstances. Edward groaned a little. In that case, think of the long term. If you agree to this project, it can increase your chances of reaching Tier 11. 
You know what is at stake and what is waiting for us in the future. Don't try to guilt trip me. We don't even have a proper method of reaching Tier 11. So, this project will not affect the general situation. Edward looked her in the eyes for a few seconds before sighing. Then, what about a compromise? Instead of using your variants, we use Professor Trelawney. Although her divination bloodline is nothing compared to yours, we can make up for the gap using numbers. Plus, we don't have to tell her anything. Luna frowned for a moment. I'll think about it. Then, she immediately ended the conversation, leaving Edward alone on his throne. Morgana, what do you think the consequences would be if I did it behind her back? The little elf appeared before him. She has great control over the department, so it's very unlikely to hide it from her. And once she finds the truth, well, the best case scenario is she ignores you for a few years, possibly hundreds of years, and the worst case scenario is she divorces you. Edward groaned softly as he muttered, So severe, huh? Boss, if I may say something, go ahead. You know there is no need for reservation between us. Your current reaction is probably the result of your insecurity that the Empire's defense system was so easily breached. In other words, your paranoia makes you subconsciously fear similar things will happen again. So, you want to do whatever necessary to ensure it doesn't even at the cost of your personal relationship. Edward paused. You're probably right. I usually am, said Morgana with a smile, trying to lighten the mood. She knew her best was in a delicate state after experiencing the illusion formations. So, his paranoia was at an all-time high, fearing the things that happened in the illusion would come true. Well, smartass, I'm glad you're here to keep me in check, said Edward as he rolled his eyes. Let's get back to work. Did you send the invitations? Yes. Everybody is already waiting. Did anyone not show up? No but a few people seemed deep into important research and sent a representative. That's fine, nodded Edward. Let's begin. Thousands of screens appeared before him, showing him all types of arcanists. Humans, other races, old, young, women, men, and some people who even looked like children for odd reasons. All the people present were people who had a private demiplane, so their ranks ranged from Tier 4 to Tier 7. As soon as these people appeared, they saluted the emperor as a form of politeness. However, after seeing Edward's nonchalant, almost cold response, they knew something must have happened. Less than 30 minutes ago, Arcanists James Carter and Edward Wentworth III betrayed the empire and sold their soul to Guznat. Wentworth almost succeeded in using a Tier 8 spell, destroying the entire solar system. The faces of these Arcanists changed. Their hearts trembled as they realized how close they were to death. Among these people, few people could survive the sudden destruction of the solar system. So, the result of such a terrorist act would be catastrophic. Your Majesty, is this why there was an anomaly of time stopping recently? Asked an arcanist. Yes. Everyone quieted down, analyzing the ramifications of this event. A few smart people had already guessed the reason for this meeting and were unhappy. I made the use of demiplanes public to give you personal space to do your research. I basically allow each of you to have your own small country where you have absolute power, including military powers in the forms of golem legions. But what is the result? Many people were against such loose control of the demiplanes, and many others were against allowing private use altogether. But Edward proceeded because, in the future, Arcanists will travel to other planes and, eventually, other universes. So, they need to be a walking civilization to conquer, visit, or explore these places. So, he allowed them to develop to prepare for the future. Anyway, private demiplanes will be more strictly regulated from now, and the threshold for possessing one will be raised. We will place a dimensional wall to separate all demiplanes from the Empire's territory to prevent the previous situation. So, be prepared that it will be more difficult for you to enter the territory from your demiplane. These arcanists secretly cursed in their mind. Although the emperor used sophisticated words like more strictly regulated, they knew what these words actually meant. The intelligence department will now secretly infiltrate their demiplanes and monitor them. After all, they need resources for their experiment or raising their legion, so it's easy to infiltrate. 
Even the ones who do not allow people in their space and only use golems did not think they were safe. With the royal family's capabilities, it's not impossible for them to secretly control many of their golems without anyone else being aware. Additionally, that dimensional wall will also affect them as it will make traveling to Earth more challenging, limiting their connection to other Arcanists. The exchange of ideas and knowledge is the cornerstone of any powerful Arcanist. So, most of them will have great connections, friends, or acquaintances with people in many fields. If this decision was made any time before today, they could protest, even banding together and using public opinion to protest such a decision. However, these cunning casters knew it was impossible to do so with the betrayal of these two. If they tried anything now, they would become pawns for the emperor to display his power and warn others. I have said what I needed to, said Edward. The meeting is finished and you're dismissed. He waved his hand to close all these screens, not giving anyone the chance to ask any more questions.